Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the square root of negative one is equal to. Now, if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. As a matter of fact, I will even uh, go as far as uh, saying, use your calculator, okay? Now, if you have like a basic calculator, maybe even like your cell phone, your calculator might give you like a question mark. You may not know the answer, okay? And I'm not gonna reveal it too much because I wanna uh, get you kind of uh, interested in what's gonna be going on with this particular uh, number. But if you have something more um, advanced, maybe like a scientific calculator, definitely like a uh, TI-84 graphing calculator, something very advanced like that, well, you probably will get the correct answer. Uh, but here's the deal, even though your calculator will give you the answer, you know, do you understand what the answer is? So I'm kind of leaving things kind of vague here. Uh, for a second because I want to give you an opportunity to see if you know the right answer. And if you do, again, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you uh, the correct answer here in just one second, and then we're going to have a quick discussion on what's going on with the square root of negative one. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the answer. The square root of negative one is equal to what? Well, let me go ahead and show you the answer right now. It's equal to I. Now, a lot of you might be saying to yourself, you know, like, hey, wait a minute. I is not even a number. What are you talking about? Uh, you know, you're expecting some sort of value. Maybe you said this, the square root of negative one is equal to uh, negative one. Now, if you uh, put this down as your answer, that's okay. Probably a lot of you um, answer this uh, question this way, but this is incorrect. Let's go ahead and talk about that here in a second. But first of all, if you knew the answer and you got this answer right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100%. Matter of fact, we'll throw in a few bonus stars because that's pretty impressive. Okay, so what does it mean? Let me kind of go back to here. If I'm asking uh, you the square root of nine, okay, if I'm trying to figure this out, what am I really saying? Well, what we're looking for is a number times itself that gets us back to nine, okay? So the square root of nine is what? Hopefully you said, oh, isn't that uh, three? And you would be correct, positive three. It's gonna be explicit with that, positive three times a positive three gets us back to a positive nine, okay? But is this the only number that gets us back to a positive nine? No, if we multiply negative three times a negative three, we also get back to a positive nine. So when you think about this, if you said, well, the square root of negative one is negative one, well, let's test that, okay? So negative one times negative one is a positive one, okay? We're looking for the square root of negative one, so we didn't get back to a negative one, so this is an issue, right? So you're like, well, what's going on? Well, uh, the answer again is this thing, I. So what does this mean? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and explain that now. Okay, so let's first talk about something called real numbers. Now, these are all the numbers that you pretty much um, start learning with when you're, you know, start learning mathematics. Uh, what do you first do when you're a tiny little baby? You start learning what? Well, you start learning. You start to learn how to count. You're like, oh, there's one uh, dog. Here is two dogs. You so you start counting things by using the digits of your uh, hand, for example, right? One, two, etc. These are called the natural numbers or counting numbers. And then we throw in this number zero. Like, hey, there is no dog, so we need some sort of symbol to represent nothing. So we have zero. And then eventually you start learning the positive and negative numbers and fractions and decimals. All these numbers here are on what we call the real number line. This is pretty much what um, all of us have been familiar with up until around you know, uh, your study into like algebra one, algebra two. So if I asked you uh, what the square root of uh, nine is, well, the answer is what? We already talked about that. It's both positive and negative three. I can locate the answer is what positive and negative three. Let me write that negative uh, three right there. So we can locate these answers here on the number line, the real number line. So the square root of a positive line, uh, its answer again is in the part of the real number system. But as we said, we have the square root of negative one. Well, what's its answer? 
Well, it's not a part of this number system, okay? We need to actually go to another math galaxy, another number system. So let's talk about that right now. Okay, so what we're talking about is something called complex numbers. So the square root of negative 1 is kind of, um, uh, kind of our introduction to something called complex numbers. So what you need to know is this. The numbers that you've studied up to this part of um, your math education have been real numbers. We learn real numbers. We master all this stuff, for positive and negative numbers, fractions, decimals, uh, square roots, square roots of positive values. So that's the real numbers. But when we come across a situation like this, we need to open up uh, our uh, number systems to more complicated number, six, number systems, and that's why we have the complex numbers. Now, notice this little notation here. Uh, this uh, little bracket right here in mathematics is uh, kind of typical of what we call a set. So if you see a C like that, that could be like the complex number system, or a big R like that, that could uh, would represent the real number system, or sometimes you'll have like that, the set of real numbers. So just a little bit about uh, mathematical notation. Now, when you're looking at complex numbers, we're going to see that complex numbers take the form of something called a plus bi. Okay, so this is what a complex number looks like. And let's go ahead and explore that right now. Okay, so complex number is in the basic form of a plus bi. And complex numbers are a huge part of mathematics, especially more advanced math. I'm not going to get into like a full lesson on complex numbers. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction so we can answer this question, what the square root of negative 1 is. But anyways, complex numbers take the form of a plus bi. So the a, okay, part of a, uh, of a complex number is a real component. Okay, Now here I have an example of a complex number, 7 plus 2i. This right here would be considered one complex number. So its real component is a real number, 7. Okay, So your first number with this a plus bi will be some number from the real number line. Okay, it could be a fraction, decimal doesn't make a difference. Uh, so in this case, we have 7. All right, now the bi portion, well, this part of a complex number is called the imaginary part. Okay, and you'll always have this little i right here behind some sort of number, all right? So what is i? Well, i is equal to, very specifically, the square root of negative 1, okay? This is what makes an imaginary number an imaginary number. So... For example, in this particular complex number, the imaginary part would be 2i, where this i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 1, if I wanted to be more technical about it, okay, would be just be 0 plus i. So 0 would be the real part, and then the imaginary part would be a 1i. Okay, So um, let's put that little right there, a little imaginary part. But let's um, talk about why uh, this is important. Let's go to a problem like this. Uh, let's take the square root of negative 4, all right? Well, uh, if we put this into our calculator, by the way, if you did put this into your calculator, a lot of you probably have uh, something pop up in your window that said error. Your calculator is confused. You're like, hey, I can't find two numbers such that I multiply them together. It gets me back to negative 4 because your calculator, at least the more basic calculators, are operating uh, only within the real numbers. If you have a more advanced calculator, it's smart enough to know, oh, you're talking about an imaginary number, so it will uh, give you like an I as the answer. But here, for example, uh, the square root of negative 4, if we wanted to figure this out, we could write this this way. The square root of uh, negative 4 is equal to 4 times negative 1. Okay, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Now we have a property of square roots that can basically pull this one big square root into two separate square roots of the factors here. So that would be square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. Okay, so what is the square root of 4? We'll just take the uh, principal square root, the positive answer. That would be 2. And what is the square root of negative 1? Well, again, by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, so the answer here would be 2i. All right, so that's a quick introduction to complex numbers and how they, you know, uh, relate to the real number system. So uh, you pretty much start seeing the complex numbers in any course 
um, well, you might uh, kind of get a quick introduction into like, let's say a first year algebra course, something like algebra one, but definitely as you get into algebra two, college algebra is certainly pre-calculus. You are heavy duty into complex numbers. There's so much more to know about complex numbers. If you're studying complex numbers, um, let me get on, can you, I'll give you a couple suggestions. One, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel about complex numbers, but I'd probably steer you towards my Algebra 2 course, College Algebra. If you're at the pre-calculus level, um, you know, I have uh, that course as well. But again, you're just getting a quick introduction at the Algebra uh, 1 level in terms of type of roots, etc. So anyways, you know, if you've never seen complex numbers, again, you will see them as you continue to study Algebra. But if this video was interesting and it helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.